let's head into the Zoom room where we have the acting uh, state historic preservation officer, Carlotta Leon Guerrero. Good morning, Carlotta. Good morning, Chris and Bree and Jason. Good morning to Guam. Good morning. Well, how about this programmatic agreement? I guess we'll just. Uh, well, I, I saw the. What would you, go ahead, go ahead. What go would on. you like to know about it? <laughs> I guess we'll just first uh, address that um, the concerns. I know that uh, Senator Talena Nelson had uh, come out uh, with some concerns, I think, shared by a few people in the community, um, that the entire process for the PA uh, wasn't really uh, open uh, for public comment uh, in a way that uh, would generate real uh, public comment. And I know that I saw a reporter that you came out and said that you thought that was was good, good enough the level of um, uh, public input that was had. So I guess we'll just uh, start there. Um, how do you respond to these criticisms that the entire process um, wasn't that accountable or transparent? Well, what I would say about it is that the, the number of comments that did come in, um, there were 18 people or groups that did uh, comment on the programmatic agreement and from that six amendments were made to the document so that's a pretty high um, level of success I think for the people that um, um, participated in shaping the document the people that commented I, I would say that um, I'm confident that we took this document and made it much better than the one that um, was on the books and the other thing that I'm very confident about is that the mechanism is in, is in place to amend it. We can go back and amend this at any time. So if uh, members of uh, the legislature or the stakeholder groups or activist groups think that something was so um, blatantly missing and is so wrong about it, they can put the language together and, and, and we can discuss moving it and amending the document. Uh, so I, I know that there was, there was like one oversight hearing, uh, but when you say that you felt that there was enough opportunities for the public to comment on it, are you uh, referring specifically Carlotta to the online, uh, comments and, and do you feel that? No, no, not, not just that. Okay. Um, there were, uh, over, over the period of about two years, there were workshops and for some reason that I don't understand, the only reporter that was in the workshops was uh, from the PDN. I don't, I don't know if other organizations, um, you know, wanted to attend, but the only one that was there was the PDN. So an extensive coverage from the PDN and interviews that were given, meetings that we had with the legislature. I had numerous meetings with, uh, um, Therese Terlahi, some in private, some she would come to the, she came to the SHPO's office, I'd be in her office. She had a roundtable discussion with me and Patrick Lujan and Vera and Joe Kanata and John Mark Joseph that lasted for three and a half hours um, at the legislature live on TV. So um, I feel in the whole process, there were moments and opportunities, but having said all that, having heard all what everybody is saying, I wanted to tell you that going forward, uh, I have been having meetings with Don Munya, KGTF, former Senator Kelly uh, March Titano, who felt, feels that this government could do better at getting comments. And so we've had several meetings. We're meeting again tomorrow to discuss how to use our existing forums and, and expand to additional forums so that we can do a better job at grabbing public comments. Can you go over what were the uh, six amendments that were made because of public comment? Um, one of them was uh, the expiration date. Everybody uniformly uh, felt that uh, there should be an expiration date. We thought that the termination clause was so strong that um, um, that there, uh, there was no need for an expiration date. But um, so we added a five year expiration date. That was one of them. Another one was uh, in the document, we in, in the draft document, we had stated that, um, um, that the joint region Marianas had six months to provide us all of these documents that we had asked for. 
and um, everybody uh, um, felt very strongly about that. So what happened was um, Joint Region Marianas did give us within just a short period of time all the documents we had asked for. But what I want to clarify about that is they felt that they had given them to us over the span of months and years, and it's the the office that um, um, could not did not have them archived in a uh, in a in a cohesive way. So there would be this back and forth of, I don't have the documents. No, we've got a stamp received that we gave it to you. So it was like, give it to us all at once so we can say that we've got it all. So that's what that was. I don't think I did a good enough job of explaining um, why that language was in there. Another one was on uh, traditional cultural property. We said, we're gonna expand and, and think uh, and allow for, um, um, our cultural practices to also be given greater consideration. And one of the comments was, you made that too vague. You, you should tie that down to something. So we tied it down to um, Nat National Register Bulletin number 38 on traditional uh, cultural property that tells you exactly what you have to do. So I think that's for um, another one was that um, they could tell in the language that um, when we updated some of the language on, on um, that we had used uh, previous language where we had, had been joined with the Mariana. So it was like a, a, it was like confusing language. In one case, you're saying this, but in another, you're saying that. And we went in and cleaned that up. I think that's five. I, I can't think of the, the, other one just off the top of my head, but, um, oh, I, um, that they wanted this clause, uh, a clause added on um, saying that you can't expend funds beyond what you have, something like that. So that was something that was mentioned a number of times. Yeah, I, I think I'm just looking at the letter from uh, Senator Nelson. Uh, so I guess she's requesting an AG opinion uh, on the mm -hmm. uh, program programmatic agreement she feels that at issue is whether the agreement with the governor's signature is valid in light of a 1982 superior court of guam case opining that if the governor mm -hmm. has authority to execute federal laws applicable in guam then execution of such laws becomes a subject of local application which the guam legislature is empowered under the organic act to legislate in such matters to assist the governor in enforcement of his duties did you happen to see that letter? I've, I've seen that letter and I've seen the response to it. Mm -hmm. um, the um, Our attorney, my attorney from the SHPO's office is Jessica Toft at the attorney general's office. And so before she could respond to the senator, since I'm her client, um, <laughs> we had a discussion about what that uh, letter says, what she's saying, what she's responding to. Uh, to the senator. And so uh, Senator Nelson will get the response probably uh, today, but um, um, yes, I've seen that. I, it, and I've seen the response. Um, so, so you disagree? You, wait, wait, wait. You oh. said the AG's office represents the SHPO? Yes. And they're asking, the senator's asking the AG's office for an opinion. Well, I think that that um, one of the things that um, is clear is the senator was asking if um, what role the attorney general's office had had in this and in the drafting of the programmatic agreement. And then one of the responses is that they've been involved from the outset. And one of the things that I would like to point out is one of the earliest, I, I think one of the, or the first meeting that I ever had when I came into Governor Leon Guerrero and Tenorio's administration was, um, uh, with Senator uh, Therese Terlahi, uh, Michael Macchio, the chairman of the Guam Preservation Trust, myself from the governor's office, Linda Uggen from the SHPO, and, and Levin Camacho, the attorney general, where Therese was saying that going forth that, that the SHPO must have a representation uh, legal representation from the attorney general's office. So the one that was the driving force putting this together to make sure that the SHPO had legal representation at every phase of this programmatic agreement was Therese Terlahi. And we're very, very, um, you know, appreciative of her, her doing that. Mm -hmm. So what was the response? 
Um, I think that um, the first thing I saw was the explanation that the Attorney General's office had had reviewed the document and had been involved from uh, 2019 in the drafting and the um, uh, implementing of the PA. So I think that was one of the first things that I saw. And then um, also, uh, I think she said that um, she disagreed with the citation that was used on the, um, that it was uh, was not appropriate, the, the citation that was used, and also cited federal law saying that um, who are the signatories and the governor's uh, uh, authority to be involved to sign on. So it was a, a lot of legal citations of why we did what we did and why you're, uh, we, we disagree on you thinking that this should be applied to by this certain standard. That's, that's a civil statute and doesn't apply to this. Okay. So basically, hello, where you've been? We've been involved since the beginning. Well, I, I, uh, I think that this will be useful information and I appreciate um, Senator Nelson going fishing like this because um, um, the, the idea that um, when you start to see who was all involved in this and you start to see that the, we had legal representation in the Attorney General's office, then, then that starts to um, take some of the focus off of how well was this crafted. I think that it's what I say in the simplest terms is we took it from a D plus to a B and there's plenty of room of improvement if you want to get from a B to, to an A plus. So that's what um, I think we can do better with uh, grabbing more public comments. And, and the, the thing that I'm discussing with Senator Kelly and Don Munya over KGTF is not just driving comments for programmatic agreements. It's like we're having a conversation about there's so many comment periods for environmental issues in addition to cultural and historic issues, but on the federal side, but then would we want to expand it if we're going to figure out how to drive public comments in a meaningful, productive way? Uh, how do we let people know that there's a zone change in your village in Jedido where they want to uh, put in a, uh, a steel worker <laughs> making rebar factory in your village? You know, uh, then you start to, to to go, oh, this could get really interesting. What all could we drive and 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 allow the public to help shape these documents and these these changes? Carlotta, I know you're you're talking a lot about the um, uh, closed door meetings, official to official, from the federal military side to the local government side. But I think a lot of these uh, concerns being raised by uh, the senator and then uh, the activist groups are, are that we didn't have an open public a hearing style forum where you know the public and members of the public can ask questions um, to the military so how feasible is that moving forward and is that something that uh, your office uh, would support well um, I remember a few years ago, uh, Senator, uh, um, I can't remember which senator it was. I think it was Senator Frank Uggen had oversight and he brought in Admiral Chatfield and her team for a seven and a half hour oversight hearing. Uh, so I know that, that they have participated in events. I, I participated with the round table discussion early on, um, on a Saturday with senators as well as, um, um, like. Dana, Dana Gutierrez, uh, um, I mean, a, a bunch of, when it was about the Serianthus Nelsoni. So um, I, I've seen uh, them participate when, when they're asked. Nothing, nothing stops Senator Nelson or any other senators from saying, you know, we're going to have a, a, an, an oversight hearing or roundtable discussion, you know, every month. Uh, I've offered to meet with Senator Nelson every week if she would like to, to tell her what I'm seeing and hearing, what what I need her help with, what legislation needs to be fixed. Um, the, a budget is being prepared right now for the cultural repository, the museum, uh, extra help for the SHPO's office. That's going to come in. That's being worked on right now. She's the oversight of historic preservation. We're going to need her help on that too. So there's... Uh, there's lots of opportunities where I want to work with Senator Nelson. All right, thanks, uh, oh, Senator. Okay. 
Senator, so I, I guess you want to work with Senator Nelson. Uh, when do we walk the walk on that? Are any plans to sit down with her? Or? I did. I had a two uh, about two weeks ago. I had a two hour meeting with her. Um, every she's she sent me, I think, a uh, one FOIA and one request for uh, uh, for information. We we replied to everything. She asked me for my cell phone and I gave it to her. So you know, um, and then I described to her what happened when I was a senator. Joe T was uh, up here at Adeloop, and it was all about military issues. And Joe T offered to me and La Morena. Uh, to come up to Adeloupe every Thursday and to get involved with military issues. And we did every Thursday for four years, Lamarine and I would come to Adeloupe and have lunch with Joe T for 90 minutes and discuss everything that was going on with um, getting SRF back or uh, getting excess federal lands back, all of those issues. And then we had a role in that. And then we would go back to the legislature and explain to our colleagues what was going on, as well as introduce legislation needed to facilitate uh, uh, what was needed at the time so that we could uh, negotiate that lease for SRF as an example. So I offered that to the Senator as an example of a pathway that I have participated in and I've seen have have uh, very good um, results. So, so basically, uh, Carlotta, you're you're saying that um, the public hearing and workshop and the comment period uh, was enough, and that you feel like we got a fair deal with the PA. I feel that um, the deal that we got with the PA. Um, is a work in progress and um if if something comes up and something changes and new information or that we can go back to it and we can amend it once uh, once you're confident that you can go back and amend then then um you're i'm okay to move move it along in the process so i'm confident in the amending process that uh that if we we have something that we feel so strongly about that we can go back. Uh, last question I wanted to ask about the remains they found last year. Uh, it was a Tai Ulu, a, a headless uh, skeleton. And then I remember there's a recommendation made to preserve in place. Do you have any update on, on that? Yes, uh, it was studied and there was a special ceremony where the governor and the admiral, myself, Vera, and, and others went there with our state archaeologist and Joe Garrido, uh, who handles uh, um, the issues around human remains and burials for the government of Guam. We went up there after the, the site had been studied and then when it's preserved in place, the uh, a basket uh, was the governor placed a basket where the head would have been and then uh, put dirt over this. And um, Joe Garrido um, said some very eloquent uh, remarks about the significance of what had happened at this site and and what we were doing here today. And then so were the remains left there or were they taken out? Yes. Yes. Hey, you have any pictures of that or video? Um. We didn't take any. Um, it was it was pretty solemn, and uh, we didn't take any. But uh, I'm I'm sure Joint Region Marianas uh, might have taken some. And when when was this uh, ceremony? Mm, I can't remember uh, exactly, but uh, we were all in masks, no. so that that kind of gives you an idea. <laughs> it's been in recent times. Right. Okay, Carlotta. Well, Maybe within the past three or four months. I see. All right. Well, thanks for your time. Thanks for asking. There you go. Take care. Acting Shippo, Carlotta Leon Guerrero, uh, 915 on the link. We'll take a quick break, and we're coming back with a public auditor, BJ Cruz. As there was a, um, what did I call this morning, Jay? A blistering audit released on.